All right, ladies and gentlemen, man, y'all know what time it is, man. This is going to be a little bit different than what we normally do for the two racks a week challenge. This is pretty much going to be like a two racks a week, you know, follow up. So last year we had, I had the pleasure of speaking with my boy Curtis down there in Dallas, Texas, the big D. And um, he thought it'd be a great idea to, you know, <clears throat> share his story, the things he learned from making two racks a week, the challenges he had to overcome, the lessons he learned from doing this. So yeah, man. So I think uh, I'm gonna start like a new segment, pretty much like the two racks a week recaps. We're gonna, you know, touch base with the winners uh, post you know, make it two racks a week and see if, are they still making two racks a week? What exactly are you doing now? So, uh, yeah. So welcome back, man. You know, thanks for reaching out and thanks for coming man. with this whole concept. So first of all, thank you for having me back, man. Like I'm real happy with everything you've been doing. I checked out the other channel you guys have. Okay. With the re the Voyagers, yeah, yeah, yeah. San Francisco Voy Voyagers. So shout out, man. Thank you. All right, yes, thank you, sir. man. You know, I appreciate that, and you know, I appreciate you for you know reaching out continuously and you know sharing the love, man. This dude Curtis, man, he a real life supporter, man. You know, he'll send me videos of uh, and pictures of him meeting up with other uh, ride share drivers. Shout out to uh, <clears throat> Craig down in Dallas. You know, you sent me about two pictures and a video of y'all, you know, just interacting, being on the road and just, you know, linking up together, you know, at different times. So, like, you know, that's great, man. So I appreciate that very much. Yes, but, sir. um, but yeah, last year we spoke, that was your first time, you know, making, uh, you know, two racks a week. And for like the new people that's going to, you know, be watching this video, uh, this is just like a real quick summary. Like, uh, what were you doing before you started doing ride share and what made you get into it? So before, before the 2K challenge and ride share, I was working a warehouse job. It was a 10 hour shift. Mm -hmm. I was pretty much working with them for 10 years. Okay. And the first four, I believe four years, it was California. I was living in California and okay. made the move out here to, uh, to Dallas and finished my last six years with them. And I just wanted to get into something different. I wanted to work for myself and just start this whole journey into entrepreneurship. Okay. Yeah, I completely understand that. You know, sometimes it's good to switch it up. You know, you want a whole different uh, scenario and you know, you want to be free. You know, you want to pursue things that you're passionate about. You want to be your own man, be your own boss. So I completely understand that. So last year, of course, was your first time, you know, making two racks a week. Uh, let's just go back in time and talk about, you know, that time, you know, that you made two racks a week. And exactly how long did it take you uh, to make it once you found uh, found out about the challenge? So when I made 2000 last year, it was it was 76 hours. Mm. So for for those who don't know that the app is going to tell you active time mm -hmm. uh, actual working time so really 60 hours but i just go with the 76 hours just okay throw it out there so 76 hours two racks a week you know not too shabby man <clears throat> and, how, how, and how long did it take you to to reach it um so when i became full time into rise share I'm, and I'm sorry, everybody. When I was working at the at my full time job, I was doing ride share part time, mm. and I decided to go over to full time. This was last year, so it took me three weeks to hit the two K when I, you know, became full time. Three weeks. Ooh, that's a that's a real good turnaround. So it took you, you know, three weeks, and then you finally hit two K. You came on the channel and you know shared your story. So everybody, you know, if y'all want to go to see, you know, Curtis's story, you know, how he made two racks, you know, a little bit more background, y'all could definitely uh, go to that video. I'll put it in the description below. So check that out. So it took you three weeks and this was last year, you know, within this past year, it's been a lot of changes, you know, a lot of people have been talking about how, you know, the, the wages have been going down, you making less money, the incentive structure has been, you know, a little bit differently. 
uh, you know, talk about, I guess, like this past year, like what has been going on with your personal life as far as you still making two racks a week? Like, uh, like what's been going on? So pretty much uh, <clears throat> one, of, one of the pros of doing this full time, you just, you see a different side of life. So mm. I start getting into other stuff. They there's all kind of gig apps. There's one called Insta Work. And yeah, yeah. It's 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 good stuff out there. Uh, networking, meeting new people, and I'm just I'm still in this journey, just finding out where I want to go with this. Okay. Right now, I have vending machines on the check off list. Oh, nice. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, and so we're gonna. No, go ahead. <clears throat> I was just gonna say, I'm sorry. Uh, we're just gonna set up vending machines, and I was also gonna say I've been inspired to get into this YouTube officially and start my own channel. Good man, that's, and I love hearing that because I always encourage <clears throat> you know people to start their own channel or make their own content, and it's like uh, you know just push their narrative and you know they become their own brand. So that's you know that's a good thing. And I'm glad that you mentioned, like, you kind of, you know, trying to find yourself because it's like, okay, you go out there, you, you work in full time, you made two racks a week, and it's like, okay, now what's next? And that's why I always tell people to, you know, come up with some type of plan or goal, something that, that they're trying to achieve is because, yeah, it's cool to make the money, but we're not trying to drive forever. It's like, all right, now I can make two racks a week, you know, I can sustain myself, and it's like, okay, now what's next? Like, what's... uh you know, beyond driving. I think too many people focus, you know, on driving. And uh, the whole purpose, if, you know, people that's gonna be new watching this, it's not even about the two racks a week. It's about, you know, you developing your mindset, you developing the work ethic, uh, you know, the disciplines to, you know, translate into other avenues in life. So, um, you know, talking about, you know, the time that you made two racks a week until now, as far as like some of the challenges and adversity you had to overcome because you made it within three weeks. So I know in a year, I know a lot of stuff has changed and, you know, a lot of hidden things that you weren't expecting to happen. So talk about that. Yeah. So pretty much after I want to say 21 flat tires, 32 <laughs> oil changes, <laughs> uh, pretty much the old car had to upgrade so mm. that that's the biggest one that's the question okay what would you do if you couldn't drive tomorrow so that that became a reality and mm. you 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 have to reflect i it, the day the days got they got hard and i didn't think i was going to make it through so i started going back to some of the old stuff that we were talking about, some of the old videos, looking for that motivation, looking for that spark. And at the end of the day, I have this thing where I write down, I write down Uber. And mm -hmm. then I cross out the word Uber. And I, it's left with the, the first letter in Uber, which is you. You. Ooh. Which is you. So when I realized that that's, that's when good stuff started happening. We, we don't just sit here and say, uh, take, take a gamble on yourself, take a chance on yourself. Like you, you really, you really go through that and yeah. you're going to find out who you are at the end of the day. Yep. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm so glad that you mentioned that it's because man, yeah, it's definitely hard. And once, once things are going great, they're going great. But when they going yep. bad, it's like, dang, now, now you got to look deep within yourself. It's like, damn, man. Do I really want this? Do I really want the things that I say I want as far as, you know, starting a business, being an entrepreneur, excuse me, being an entrepreneur, working for myself? Because time's, time's going to get rough. Like, I, I, I can't remember exactly which video I said it in, but I said it, man. Like, it's going to happen. It's 100% guarantee it's going to happen. And it's like, now you have to look in, you know, look in the mirror and be like, okay, see what you're really made of. Because you mentioned, like, a lot of things right there as far as you had to buy a new uh, car. So what what happened to the the last car you in? Um. So the overall thing, it pretty much came down to engine, um, mm -hmm. and it's starting to turn into being back and forth at the mechanic. Like, 
every other week. Yeah. So the the miles, I, I'm not worried about the miles. The miles mm-hmm. are going to go up. So it, it was just the AC, and I'm in Dallas. It, this is yeah. a, a hot summer out here. So it, it started off with the AC, and you you just know when the car don't feel right, yep. it, it don't feel right. So it was to the point where I had to go do some deliveries. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't feeling too comfortable with passengers. Yeah, so. yeah. And that that was it. That the old car just it served its purpose. Mm. Yeah, yeah, man. Like I always say, man, it's definitely you know just a tool, man. But uh, talk about you know your mindset, your thought process. You know, uh, once the car was you know slowly but surely growing out, because most people. They will look at this and hear this like, look, I told you, you know, depreciation, the car and all this is not worth this, it's a scam. What made you just like want to keep going and as far as getting another car and, you know, staying committed to this? What what was telling you to just that this was the right move? It's exactly what you just said. The old car was a tool. So mm-hmm. when the old car broke down, I I like to say I like to speak of it like business terms. Mm -hmm. So something in my business broke down a business, uh, my old job. I used to work at just any job when something breaks down in the business, what they do, they replace it. Mm -hmm. So that, that was my mindset. It it wasn't a man. They, they were right. You go through cars and truth of the matter is this car had miles on it already before I became a a full-time driver. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you're gonna go through miles regardless. So, my mindset was, I gotta get another car. Yeah, I gotta, you know, I gotta keep getting this 2K. Okay. And something else was a lot of gratitude because you you will get humble. You'll mm-hmm. get humble real quick. So, it's how you react. My reaction, I was calm with it. And I was I was grateful. I started cleaning out the, the old vehicle. My lady's like, clean out your old vehicle and make space for a new vehicle. Mm. So I said, I got the vacuum, started cleaning the car. Even though it was broken down and everything, it was looking brand new. And a week later, we had a brand new car. Nice, man. Not too shabby. Man, shout out to you for, you know, overcoming that adversity and, and kept going. Um, how long did it take for you to, you know, uh, make that decision? Because I know you had to contemplate, like, damn, is this the right move? Get a new car. It's like, do I really want to invest this money into it? Or uh, should I go back to maybe, you know, getting a part-time job or a full-time job? Like, uh, did you have those thoughts or? Not, not really. To, mm-hmm. And I'm going to be I'm going to be honest with you just mm-hmm. because it's been a full year of me. Uh, doing this and I tell myself man (laughs) I'm like how am I doing this but at the same time I'm like I'm doing it so in the beginning I was thinking about should I go back to a job and full-time part-time but when this happened that never really crossed my mind I I was pretty much already locked in Mm -hmm. like this this is my lifestyle like Mm -hmm. right now currently in my life this is my lifestyle right here Okay. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to you, man. Because what, well, like I said, what's going to happen is a lot of people going to see this and they going to go through this at some point in time, you know, their vehicle is going to start to either they gonna get into an accident or something's going to happen to their vehicle when they're going to have to replace it. That's inevitable. Uh, yeah. What, what kind of car was it again? It was a Kia. Kia Sportage. What year? Uh, 2016. Okay. 2016. You know, that's gone. You got a whole new car. So a lot of people, they will think like, uh, Maybe this isn't worth it. You know, this, uh, my car, this, my car, that depreciation. I'm just going to go back, you know, to get another job. But like you said, man, this is my lifestyle now. It's like (laughs) you got to the point where a job is not even in the, you know, the picture for you. you Yeah. (laughs) You got addicted to this. You know, know, and I like hearing that. I was about to say. Do you think it was part of, you know, you making two racks a week and, you know, going through the, you know, the challenges and actually, you know, driving 70 plus hours to help, you know, build your confidence or was it something else for you to help build your confidence in order for you to, you know, have this type of mindset? 
Um, it was most definitely the the 70 hours and all that. Definitely confidence boosters for sure. And then just seeing uh, who I was becoming, who I was growing into. Mm. And I think I think about who I used to be. I wasn't growing back then. So and the, the crazy part is I'm just going about my life thinking everything was OK. Yeah. So, you know, just looking at how things turned out in a year. I'm, I really am. I'm enjoying every day, every day, every moment. Um, the, the 2k part, like the money is it, good and everything, but it, it's definitely a bigger picture in it though. Mm, I like, see, I like the fact that you mentioned that, like, uh, how you were in the past <clears throat> compared to the person that you are now. Yeah. Talk about, you know, the Curtis back then, you know, from like a year and a half ago to the person you are now, like, Man, uh, back back then they didn't want me. I'm making two K. They all on me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for for real though, man. Like, I had to find my voice back then. Mm -hmm. Uh, speak speak up for myself. You know, all 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 the all the little stuff. And mm -hmm. like like I said, the scary part is I thought it was all okay. Like just going about life. An autopilot, mm. and you know you just you, you fortunate one day to to wake up and you realize that like this this really is a whole life in front of me. Like I'm about to start living it. Mm. You know, absolutely. So. Yeah, yeah, I agree, man. Like, and that's one of the things I learned from uh from driving. Not only you know putting the hours in and see what I'm truly capable of. But once you drive, man, you talk to thousands of people, so they pretty much could be your, uh, like your case study. Like you could study them because you studying human beings. Like, okay, you doing all this partying, doing all this drinking, but you hate your job, so it's like you rather just be distracted instead of try to change your situation. And it's like, yeah. like you said, man, it's life outside of that, and you could have a whole another life like ahead of you if you, you know, develop your mindset. You know, start readapting your mindset, you know, creating visions for yourself, you know, taking action. You know, it's it's really, you know, that simple in my opinion, man. So, you know, you enjoying this new person that you becoming just for driving. So like I, like a lot of people they'll see all these hours and oh well, you just making all this company money or go ahead and drive for fifty cent a mile. But man, we don't even think like that. We think it more so about growth, like how are we growing? you know, as human beings, as, as, you know, people, are we getting closer to our goals, you know, stuff like that. And yeah. obviously you are growing. So, uh, and the growth comes from having some type of goals or something that you are pursuing. So I want you to, you know, tell the audience, you know, about that as far as like your goals and things that you are trying to pursue. Cause I know you came in the panel discussion, you know, uh, at the beginning of the year, once you had like the vision session, when you use like, saying or thinking about the things that you wanted to do so dive into that real quick yeah so i definitely want to uh touch on some goals so i for sure want to get some vending machines out here one thing i love about ride share we we see everything we're, mm -hmm. we're everywhere we know what what new buildings are being mm -hmm. built companies so you get this business mindset like I could put a vending machine in here. I could put a vending machine over there. Yeah. So that that's one of my first goals overall. I want to get this passive income coming. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to, like you say, it's, it's not always going to be about driving. You know, for, for those that keep it going, uh, kudos to you, you know. But overall, I, I need this passive income coming in. Yeah. So that's, that's for sure a goal. I want to... Just, yeah, I, I enjoy learning everything that I've been learning with the, the audio books and uh, financial uh, money techniques, mm. too. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's a you know key element is educate yourself in the car, man. So many benefits. And if you watch my channel, you're not going to lose at this because it's so many benefits to doing this There's so many ways that you can grow and learn, learn as a person. And the way I look at it and approach it, always keep the end in mind. Like, okay, I want to be here. How can I use this platform just to make money and acquire skills while I'm just making the money 
to go to the next step. Like I said, it's like a lily pad. You got to go from one lily pad to the, and hop on and go to the next. So the people who have negative opinions or, you know, negative stuff to say, is it like I say, is it perfect? No. But most people, they focus too much on the money and what the company is doing compared to, you know, focusing on themselves and how they could grow. Like you said, you crossed out Uber and it was just you. Yeah. Like you, man, you are capable of way more than what you think you are. So there's no point, in my opinion, of focusing on, you know, what the company is doing because you can't change it. And most of you are going to keep driving anyway, or you're going to do something else. So let's say yeah. you didn't drive, right? If you couldn't drive, th- the name of the game would be the same. You get something, you have, let's say you work a job, you know, just to pay your bills, but yet you still learn other skill sets in the process. So you don't have to do that. That's all it is. That's the game. And find out ways that you can continuously to make, you know, two racks a week. Exactly. Yeah, man. Skills pay the bills, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Skill set. Skill, yeah, yeah. skill set. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That, so, you know. That's another one. Yeah. So now people going to probably be wondering, like, okay, well, he got a new car and, you know, he back driving, you know. Is he still making two racks a week? How consistent is he making two racks a week? Or, you know, what's uh, been going on with that? Yeah, so I've been hitting the 2K. The The thing about hitting 2K a week, I, in my opinion, if you hit it the first time, you're going to feel accomplished. You're going to feel like a different person. Trust me on this. And mm. it's going to be in your muscle memory. So... Mm. Am I hitting 2K every week? I'll be honest. No, I'm not hitting 2K every mm-hmm. week. But if I want to hit 2K, I'll just turn the light switch on and, right. and hit 2K. So, Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm glad that you was, you know, 100% honest because some people be like, oh, yeah, see, or they're they going to look at it. Oh, see, look, it's not worth it. He not making 2K. Ha, ha, ha. Or they're going to try to find some way, you know, to hate. But I think, like you said, the most important thing is knowing that you're capable of doing it and you could turn it on, you know, whenever you you choose to. And yeah. you know, it's like you always have that like in your back pocket. It's like a, what they call it, ace in the pocket, whatever the fuck they call it. Yeah. You always <laughs> got that, you know, that with you and you know, yeah. you, know, you know what I'm saying, like what you are capable of doing. But you did show me that you made two racks a week. Uh, I'm about to pull it up. So you show me, hold up. Oh, here it go. August, August 21st to the 28th. So he go to two racks, let it focus, bam. So you see, he just made oh, it. Oh, the Uber yeah. app too. <laughs> yeah, so, so the people that's watching in Dallas, you know, it's still doable down there. Let's see, hold on, let's see how many hours, my bad. It's still doable. So 68 hours on Lyft, uh, pretty much three hours. So you you did about 71 hours, another 70 hour, you know, week, man. You know, not too shabby. And the people that, yeah, like when you, once you go into it, are you more so worried about the hours? You worried about the outcome? Like, what do you focus on? Like when you driving? Mainly just my my goals. Mm. I'm thinking about my go- I'm on the road, uh, and I'm thinking about the the outcome, the the big game, the, the short term goals, the, mm. the long term goals. I, you know, I still go off that check off list. What can I do every day to yeah. better myself? What did mm. I learn today? I'm not going to bed tonight until I made sure I learned something today. Right. So I'm, I'm Ronnie. I'm I'm just thinking. All day, I'm just thinking. Yeah, uh, exactly. You know that that's what drives me while, while I drive. Yeah, you should always be thinking, always you know asking yourself questions. So that's why you know I tell people that they should you know do the challenge and embrace and try to make two racks a week because you're not gonna lose. There's a, it's impossible for you to lose. Even if you don't make two racks a week, you still don't lose. Because let's say you go out there, you drive 60, 70, 80 hours, you fall short, let's say 17, 1800. More often than not, you know, that's more money than you ever made in a week. So how did you lose? Or let's say you fall short, you only drove 20 hours a week. You still didn't lose because it's like, okay, 
now to some point or some degree, you have to look yourself, you know, in the mirror, hold yourself accountable. It's like, okay, why did I only, you know, make what I made? Did I really try? Did I try my best? Did I try hard? Was I consistent? Was I waking up and, you know, at the same time every day, like where was I messing up at? And if you truly care about yourself and you truly care about life, you will address that. And if you don't, then you'll just sit up here and make excuses and, you know, blame, play the blame game. But at the end of the day, it's not going to, you know, do you, you know, any good. But like I said, the most important thing about this whole challenge is, you know, learning and growing and, uh, you know, becoming a, you know, better version of yourself. And you mentioned that, you know, you like to learn. Uh, Talk about, you know, some of the things that, you know, you've been learning, you know, this past, you know, year. And, uh, you talk about the, some of the things that, you know, you tried, like, okay, I learned this, but I'm going to try this and try this. And then I'll share some stories about, you know, some of the things I tried. So uh, I started, one of the important things I started with was uh, time management. So oh. I've been doing a, a lot of reading with that, uh, setting goals, because the time management, to me, is everything. If, if you're not with your time, then you're not going to really accomplish the stuff that you set out for yourself. Right. I've, I've read the, Oh my God, I think it's called a five, 5 AM club. Okay. Read, I read that. And you know, that, that's, that was a good one. That got me on the journey of being up early, getting the day started by, by noon, you pretty much knocked out a big portion of your day compared yeah. to a lot of other people just not waking up. Absolutely. Yeah. So, man. I, yeah. And I like, you know, that you, uh, been educating yourself cause that's half the, that's a half the battle, man. Just continue feeding your mind, you know, positive stuff, education, educating yourself. And the more competent you become just at different things at life, the better you'll feel about yourself, the better you'll feel about driving. Like, I truly believe a lot of people don't have a positive experience with drivers because, you know, they don't do nothing but drive. You know, they don't yeah. educate themselves. They don't set goals. You know, they don't work on anything else besides driving. And I think that's a bad, you know, way to go about it. So for most of the audience that's watching this, man, like it's going to go, I think, in a few phases. You're going to sign up and it's going to be like the the big honeymoon phase. Like, oh, man, this is great. Working for myself. I'm making more money. Then finally, you're going to make two racks a week. Then it's like you're going to go up here, then slowly but surely flat. Then you'll go down and go here, then eventually go back up. So it's going to be like a roller coaster at first, just because there's so many things you need to learn, uh, you know, about driving, but more, most importantly, about yourself. So the first phase that people, you know, once you sign up, like you're going to start driving, then you're going to start making money. But then it's like, okay, now I'll do what I want to do. That's in the questions gonna really come and I remember I was asking myself that like okay what do I want to do I knew I wanted to make a YouTube channel but um I don't know I'm trying to think what what took me so long to start yeah yeah I, I remember now I know I know I wanted to make a YouTube channel because I had this idea of you know just going to like college campuses just cl- uh crashing classes and just sitting up there just you know being a, pretty much being a clown but once I really start to like drive and and stuff, I'm like, damn, this this I'm gonna tell people what to do, just because I met so many people who were, oh, this isn't worth it. You know, I my cousin or I used to do it, but you know, gas and this and just you know the same stuff that they pretty much saying now. And but you know along the way, I was like I said, constantly asking myself questions like, what I want to do. Uh. You know, let me try this. People start telling me about, oh, you can learn how to code, you know, go to Code Academy or, you know, learn this, uh, this type of skill set. Yeah. You know, go to coding boot camp, you know, especially I, I'm out here in Silicon Valley. I'm like, oh, yeah, let me, let me look into that. So I thought about, you know, learn the software language, you know, tinker around with that for a little bit. Went to a couple meetups and I'm like, ah, uh, damn, do I really want to do this? I'm looking around. Looking at the people, it's a bunch of nerds. Man, this really don't fit my personality. So I'm like, nah, I ain't gonna do that. Then um, I was like, okay, I'll just go with the YouTube thing. Then I started doing that. It's like, all right, cool. It's like right when I got started, pandemic happened. So then I didn't oh, post. Man. Yeah, so I didn't post for a while. 
And during that time, I'm like, damn, man, I don't know if driving going to be worth it or what's going to go back. So I was like, shit, let me learn something else. So I, you know, I went online, learned about uh, this company called Salesforce, pretty much a customer, CRM, customer relationship management company to help, you know, businesses help, I mean, acquire uh, customers and stuff like that. So I was learning about that. Then I did, I had book like a, a cough, like a mentor for that. And he was telling me, like, uh, I forgot exactly what he said, but once he, the question he asked me, it made me question myself, like, damn, do I really want to do this? Be around these, like, type of people. Do I really want to do this? Or am yeah. I just being afraid to really go after, you know, what I want? And I think that's what a lot of people at. To some degree, they know what they want, but it's just, like, fear. You know what I'm saying? Just, like, fear that yep. just hold them back. Like, oh, uh, maybe I'll just go to this because it's somewhat – you know, comfortable or everybody else doing it. And the career path is, you know, pretty much set. And I'm like, nah, fuck that. I'm back to the content. This is it. Right, no plan right. And I just went and I went through, you know, with it. So long story short, you know, the reason I bring all this up is because, you know, that's just part of the game, man. You're going to start driving. Then you're going to start to try different things. And yep. then, then eventually you'll uh, land something or figure something out that truly, is what you desire uh, truly that you want to do because, you know, it's like you growing, you keep your mind open, you're being positive. So opportunity is going to come. Trust me. That's yep. that's why it's so important to, you know, keep your mind, you know, focused on, you know, growing, learning and being positive. Because if you get in a car, you're already pissed off. You're going to miss opportunities because one conversation could that's all it takes. Conversation, somebody sharing some information with you. But oh damn, I didn't know this. Let me look into this or let me try this. And next thing you know, you got a whole new opportunity, man. So it's it's yeah. beyond just, oh well, driving fifty cent a mile, like some dickhead. I remember it was in one of my comments, oh, I'll just rather sit on the couch and just make a thousand. I'm like, bro, shut up. Like, shut up, <laughs> man. So, you know, stuff like that, man. So yeah, man, shout out to you. Yeah, the uh that that's funny that you bring up the comments, the I, I heard something recent and I forgot I forgot where I heard it from, but I heard something recent. A successful person really isn't gonna sit up here and talk about you. Yeah. So all those uh fifty cent a mile people in the comments, they talking about, they talking about. So I'm like, person must not be successful. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and like I said, you know, people, people man. They focus, they focus on the wrong things. It's like you worried about fifty mm-hmm. cent a mile, or well, look how many hours you had to do to make two thousand. Like, bro, like my goal is to make two thousand every week. Am I gonna do it every week? Probably not. More often than not, no, I'm not gonna do it every week. But I'm gonna try to. Then I'm gonna try my best. And if I don't do it, I'm back out there. And that's what right. it's that's what it's about. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be better than what you were when you started this. You know. Cause a lot of people coming from dead end jobs, they're not happy. Uh, they don't enjoy what they're doing. Then they see, you know, people out here getting the results that they want, making fifteen, seventeen hundred, two racks a week. They might, like, damn, they look like they're having a good time. They driving, they working for themselves, taking lunch when they want to, having cool conversations. Like, fuck, I want to do that. Why well, don't want to yeah. here, just sit up here again, boss? Right. Around <laughs> if I want time off, I got to ask and put it in couple weeks early then oh you can't get this because you required to work on we don't got time for that man yeah you know there's so <laughs> many things that you could learn and do out here but it all depends like if shit if you want to take that leap of faith and you know depend on yourself like do you really want the things that you say that you do because people yeah i'm going to start a business okay but you can't even drive can't be consistent in driving uber how are you going to start a business you can't even drive right <laughs> It's like, at least with this, you guarantee to make money. You Once you get approved, you're guaranteed to make money. You get out there, you turn the app on, you're going to get tripped. So you can make money. And it's quick n- access. Yeah, it's not that much of a, you know, learning curve. The learning curve just going to come from putting in the time. So I don't know. I don't know what people expect, man. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I know I asked you this, you know, last time, but, um, you know, why do you think this challenge is, you know, so important? Um, it's important because it, it gives you structure. Mm. It, what you what you put in this challenge 
is what you're going to get out this challenge for sure. Yep. So pretty much what I mean by this, this challenge is going to expose, it's going to expose you. Even, even if you don't try this challenge, it exposes you. <laughs> you got people, you got people in the comments, right? They expose themselves. So this, it, it teaches you who you are. That's, that's the important to me. This is the importance of it. And you do the math, if you do the math correctly, you you pretty much making a hundred K a year, if I'm yeah, not that's, mistaken. Exactly. That's the whole that's the whole point, man. If you can make two thousand dollars in a week, you just get closer to the hundred K mark. Then if you can do it consistently, then um shit, who knows the 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 limit, the sky's the limit. You know, if you can do it consistently, then you find a way, okay, I can make two racks a week consistently. Now what's next? Let me try to figure out a way to make two racks a week consistently while you know taking one hour a day to you know learn and pursue something that i truly want to do then you start getting that going then it's like now you got a whole plan like i'm gonna drive but this is the ultimate long-term plan and drive will be easier yep. if you don't take the time to educate yourself and learn and grow then driving is gonna be it's gonna you're gonna feel bored it's gonna get monotonous yeah you're gonna be frustrated because you're gonna feel like that's your whole world it's just driving, man. And and people are willing to look at he probably getting paid. I'm not getting paid to no company. <laughs> they ain't paying me. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to help people out and help people become, you know, yep. totally different. These these companies they don't even know this. You know, they just, oh, here they don't they don't really understand, you know, uh drivers' pain points the way I do. So Exactly. So, yeah, the you know, the choice exactly. is really yours, you know, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, any last, you know, words, you know, words of wisdom, um, you know, any words that to the existing drivers or newcomer drivers, anything you want to say? Uh, I say, I say, if you considering this, you're a new driver, you're going to learn your market, but put, put you some money to the side. Mm -hmm. We always talking about, we always talking about, Hey, don't do this because your car is going to break down. And it's just like, well, here's an idea. You just put some money to the side. And yeah, you won't have exactly. to worry about that kind of stuff, you know? Exactly. It, so uh, have fun with it. Have fun with it. Talk talk to your people. If you're not, if you're not turning your whole body like this, hey, how you doing? You ain't doing <laughs> yeah. it right. So. Exactly. You got to turn the whole body like hey. You got to turn exactly. the whole body around. But, nah, but yeah. Just just have fun with it. Be yourself. Yeah, exactly. And I agree with everything you just said, man. If you're worried about, you know, your car going down or depreciation, maybe it's not for you, man. You know, maybe, you know, you just need a job so and you can't manage stress. And that's, you know, completely fine. But a car is just a tool, man. And how many cars have I went through? Shit, I probably went through like five cars. You know, a couple uh, rental car programs. I bought a, bought a car. You know, for like twenty five hundred, then do my due diligence. Then I put like four thousand in maintenance. Had to sell that. Had to rent a car. But finally got a car. Paid that off. <laughs> then my transmission went out last year. You know, renting the car again. Got another car. But you know, that's that's just the process. But the thing is, you know, to never give up and you know continue to fight and continue to you know go after your goals. And always be in pursuit of them. That's the the main objective. Because adversity is going to come. Like ups and downs is going to come. If you study any successful people you look uh, up to, I'm guaranteed at some point they got up, came back down, got back up, came back down, went yep. bankrupt, whatever the case may be. So everybody deal with the the same struggles. But one thing that's consistent with them, they never give up. And as simple as that. Like you only right. are defeated. You only are a loser you know, once you decide that you're a loser, once you decide to quit. But even if you do quit, as long as you're happy, you got something, you know, planned that you truly want to do, hey, man, then I guess you beat the game of Uber or Lyft, you know, or ride shit, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And uh, the last thing, man, don't, you don't have to focus too much on this. It's all about you. Like, as many thousands of things that you could do, you know, for your life to set you up for the future, you don't have to drive. Nobody's forcing you. They didn't come to your house, knock on your door, put you in handcuffs, put a gun to your head and say, hey, you got to drive. Otherwise, <laughs> you know, something bad is going to happen to you. 
you know, you made it, you made a choice to do it. So, you know, stop being a yep. loser, stop making excuses and just maximize it. And, you know, take the time to learn a higher, you know, skill. Cause it's a common trope that a lot of people say, Oh, I want to, you know, get paid what I'm worth and all this, but shit, most of y'all ain't worth shit. And that's perfectly fine, man. You got to make yourself works worth something. You got to, you got to put your cell phone because nobody going to give you anything in this life. Oh, learn no. everything. You got to take it. You got to seize the opportunity, man. Then you got to show yes, the sir. world what you really worth. Then whatever you worth, you'll get paid for it. Simple as that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Could have yeah. said it any more perfect, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, man, this, this was a pleasure, you know, catching up. Um, if I have another panel discussion, you know, you're going to be one of the first people I invite on there. And um, yeah, man, the people who did make two racks a week, if y'all want to do a, a recap, uh, let the audience know uh, how life has been for you. Uh, you know, are you still making two racks a week? Uh, what adversity did you have to overcome? How's the two racks a week challenge benefit you? Just reach out to me, man, because, you know, this information is valuable and you know, we're trying to keep it as objective as possible. And a lot of people are going to see this and they get inspired you know, from hearing your story. And the reason why I like doing this is because it's everyday people. We don't have to have no no celebrities or nothing to try to market. This is like your everyday person, you know, just readapting their mindset and, you know, working hard, trying to, you know, become something, reach their goals, man. And we're just going to continue this thing, keep it moving, and just let me know, man. So until yes, next sir. time, ladies and gentlemen, shout out to Dallas, Texas. Shout out to Curtis and um, see you next time. Drum roll, guitar, piano, violin. Ronnie Speed, over and out. Holla back, Mr. Two Racks a Week. This is like the old, old, this is like the very first design that, that we had. So that's why I look so old and, uh, but throwback so it's like we reflecting always yes, reflect on the first two racks a week reflecting on him so see you next week or whenever peace all right